I kind of went and screwed this up a little bit. Normally, with this series at least, I try to do a live commentary. And I recorded the gameplay, and I definitely recorded a commentary, or at least I voiced one. But I fucked it up, and I didn't actually record the sound. <laughs> so here I am, talking over gameplay I've already recorded. Though it seems like, maybe there was a different way of doing this, but probably not. You get into the fights with the guards, and you have one turn to take them out. Now the game implies that you need to use the, uh, the chaining ability in order to take a guard out that quickly. But it doesn't seem like it's actually necessary. I got through a few of these fights without that. It is getting a little bit strange, I think. By this point in the game, you have... Your main character, which is Ryu, doesn't seem like he's actually coming across like he's the main character at all. Because he's in somebody else's story. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, an unusual thing. I made the comparison uh, to Final Fantasy XII. PlayStation 2 game released a few years after this one. Where your main character, or at least your player character, is named Vaughn. And Vaughn is your player character in the game, but he is not the main character in the story. And that kind of works, because Vaughn, even though he's observing the story, it he has, un, he has his own voice, and he's not a major contributor to the story, but he's able to comment on it, and you can get a good sense of his relationship with the other characters and all that kind of stuff, and what he thinks about the situation. This game is definitely weird, because we're not in Ryu's story, or at least not yet. You're in Nina's story, and you're in Cray's story. Nina, searching for his sister. Cray, he's been uh, imprisoned. Ryu is more or less just there for the ride. And it feels weird to be observing this story from a silent protagonist, because he's not capable of in putting his own thoughts into the story because he doesn't say anything. So, like, what exactly... How, how am I supposed to take it? How am I supposed to relate to this character? Silent protagonists, in a way, you're not supposed to relate to them at all. They really... they don't say anything, so they don't... so they become a sort of avatar for the player. Ryu in Final Fantasy... Or Final Fantasy... My god, I'm getting my name screwed up. I must be drunk right now. Ryu in Breath of Fire 3 was a silent protagonist, although I do contend that he actually does have one line, or two lines, that he says in the game. Ryu doesn't say anything, though. And he does have a story, and a lot of the story revolves around him. But he doesn't really have a personality. Because he's not supposed to go and have one. He's supposed to be like, he's supposed to be you. This, if Ryu is supposed to be us, why aren't, why can't we be playing as the main character? Now, I do figure eventually the story is going to shift focus towards Ryu, and he's going to rise in prominence in the story, but the fact is it hasn't happened yet. There's definitely something that's coming, though, because... Aside from the fact that it wouldn't make any sense if they didn't. You have this character of Folu, who is clearly going to be an important either co-protagonist or perhaps even the antagonist. And there is a connection with Ryu. So, at some point, we're going to see Ryu rise in prominence in the story. It hasn't happened yet. I guess maybe Folu might become the sixth member of the party? Because we've, we've got five. 
I'm craze missing at the moment, so he's not a part of it. But there's that sixth, um, sixth thing down there showing that there's another member of the party that we haven't gotten access to yet. Maybe it's Nina's sister or something, I don't know. Tholu might be the antagonist, although the Empire seems to be the primary antagonist. They're fighting against both of us. But, you know, we'll see. I am legitimately playing through this game blind, so I really don't know what's going to happen. Not just feigning ignorance like I tend to with a lot of these other games. Alright, we're pretty much at the end of this dungeon. The dungeons in this game are not especially long. Not that they were really all that long in Breath of Fire 3, but you could at times find yourself in those dungeons for a good 20 minutes or half hour or so, because you needed to figure out your way through them. This game cuts them down pretty far, like, there was only a few rooms that we had to roam through in order to reach the end of this dungeon, and now we rescued Cray and we just sort of need to leave. That feels kind of weird. Every time I'm... <sighs> a, a long dungeon can be frustrating, but a short dungeon can feel a little bit unfulfilling. And I guess that's sort of the complaint I have for this. I don't know how long a dungeon should be to feel right, but I feel like this is too short. If they were like maybe like 25 or 50% longer than they are now, it would maybe be just right. I mean, there were some dungeons in Breath of Fire 3 that, especially on your first run through, if you don't know exactly where to go in their weird labyrinth style uh, layouts, could be really frustrating, like the lighthouse I thought was frustrating the first time I played through. Especially if you're trying to survive for a long period of time and your characters are just um, constantly getting in the fights and whittling down your health and all that kind of stuff and you don't know what the hell you're supposed to do. It can be frustrating and they definitely seem to have not had that issue with this game, but their way of doing it is by having the dungeons be fairly simple in terms of puzzles and also being quite short. So, there's that. So I'm going to go cut out a chunk of this so I can get to the end. So I'm going to skip forward and we're going to go and make camp just so we can see what the characters have to say and then it'll be the end of the episode.
previous games, I, I didn't play Breath of Fire 1, but I did play Breath of Fire 2 and 3. The previous games have always had a kind of implicit relationship between Ryu and Nina. This game, though, seems to be more... Nina seems to be involved with Cray, as opposed to Ryu, which, in a weird sense, kind of further separates Ryu away from the um, story, because even less of it is about him. Just some little observation. I don't know if that's how the game's going to play out, but it certainly feels like it's going in that direction. Ryu isn't really a part of this story yet, and he doesn't even have a love interest. It's weird. <laughs> 